Alright guys, this is more of a serious video and this is my mental health video. It's like my experience in the New Zealand mental health system. This, things have changed and I know it is changing, but back I was part of the in the mental health system in 2017 and this is going to be right back from when I first came to New Zealand all the way through to when I left PACT, when I basically got kicked out of the system. information about this so worldwide every 40 seconds somebody takes their own life over 800,000 people every year die by suicide in New Zealand during 2018 2019 we lost 668 people and this is my story of being in the New Zealand youth mental health system if you are thinking of suicide or anything like that please do seek help it's just you need help call people Get the support and support, talk to someone. Like, I know there's a lot of things. Find the mental health hotline in your country and call it. And, yeah. Right, my story. Okay, so I don't know when my story started. But the, but I know I, it, my first suicide attempt could have been stopped. We're basically going to start off by saying. So, I started... Thinking, I was really depressed as a child and I am getting better. Okay, I'm not 100%, but I'm getting better. Um, and my mum took me into the get evaluated and they basically came back and said, yes, she has depression. No, she does not have anxiety, but I do. And I am going to say this. I got diagnosed with major anxiety disorder, which is a mix of all the different kinds of anxiety disorders into one by a leading child psychologist in Tasmania, Australia. So it is definitely confirmed and diagnosed like it was really bad. Um, so basically they're like, yeah, she has depression. That leads to high interest sucks. Like, no, not happening. It is like, no, get let diagnosed later on even again. They're like, basically we're not going to do anything for her. We went back a year later, um, they put me through a bunch of counselling, it didn't work. They told me that, nah, just go, she's going to be fine, don't worry about it. She's just saying she wants to commit suicide for attention. So I, because of that, I stopped saying it because apparently I was attention seeking. I wasn't. Um, my In 2014, the person I was dating at the time committed suicide. That's when my suicide attempt started. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I had, by the time I was, by the time 2017 came around, I had about eight suicides and suicide attempts under my belt that I had survived all of them and they didn't care about any of them, but eight. So basically the eighth time was a, another overdose attempt and I didn't tell my mum, but my friend found out because I was really sick at school. Um... Because I just woke up that day and went to school and like nothing had happened. Because <laughs> um, that's what I basically always did. It didn't work. I could continue on with normal life like nothing happened. Um, I did have injuries from other ones but nothing major. Like I never broke a bone jumping off a roof or anything which surprised me. I twisted an ankle but that was it. Um, but... Basically, she t made me tell my mum, and my mum put me on suicide watch. We went through the mental health system again, um, and they finally listened because of all of the suicide attempts. And they diagnosed, they said, yeah, okay, yeah, she has major anxiety. She has major depression. She has PTSD. She has... Struggle. I had struggled with eating disorders in the past, and they're like, yep, we can see that she's bulimic now. We can see on the history of past things that she used to have anorexia. Um, and there was a bunch of other stuff that was diagnosed. So they put me into a hospital one time overnight. That was fine. It was just an overnight stay where they got me on antidepressants. Um... I got really sick because the person who 
gave me my thing. They gave me an adult's dose and this was 2017. I was not an adult, nor am I now. I'm 16 now and it's 2019. So I was like, what, 14 at the time? Yeah, I was 14, 13 going on 14 when all of this started. Um, fast forward, oh no, I was 14. It would have been past my birthday. So... Um, eventually I got out of that and I was still on suicide watch. I got really sick because they gave me the adult dose instead of the getting my body used to it. So I was like up and down vomiting all night. And the person was like, my mum, I woke up in the morning after vomiting all night to smell McDonald's and like, oh, she was throwing up all night. She probably won't want to eat. I smelled McDonald's. I ate that McDonald's. I didn't throw up again. Thank God. But I ate McDonald's. I was not passing up McDonald's. <laughs> and they're like, huh? Um, but I had to have someone sitting with me the whole time I was there. I got discharged after that night and that day with the attempt that mum would look after me, which she did, because I'm still alive. Um, basically, they're like, well, your mum is really struggling to sleep and work and look after you, so could you go to your grandma's parents? And I was like, no, uh, like, they have a very high roof. I was very depressed at the time. I was like, I'd jump off it. So I was not allowed to go to my grandparents, so they put me into PACT. So this is where I got out. I lied my way out of the system. So I was in PACT for two weeks. And the first week I was kind of okay, I missed my mum, but I knew I wasn't getting better. I mean, I wasn't really thinking of suicide in there because I was too busy looking after the other people. Yeah, I was stopping them. Um... I'm always put on a protective role, so when I'm looking after other people, I'm less depressed than if I'm having to just see my thoughts, so it was kind of better in there. So the second week, I really wanted to get out. So I was like, can I leave? And like, no, you haven't gone things. So when I had my last checkup with my mental health person, I basically lied. I said, I'm feeling much better. Like, I don't know why I was being so stupid and trying to attempt to take my own life. Like, like, are you going to try again? I'm like, no, I'm not going to try again. It's true. I didn't try again. And they're like, oh, are you going to cut again? I'm like, no, I won't cut again. That is a lie, technically. But I, <laughs> I had two relapses after getting out. I'm not going to lie. I did have two relapses. But I have been clean since my last relapse a year officially a year up since that last relapse which I'm very proud of there is no day that I don't want to do it but I kept my head held high um and they're like okay like that's fine don't worry about it then we'll let you out so after that second week I was allowed out and thank god because my period came two days after getting out I was not going to be in there for my period I refused to be in there for my period they would not have cared for me at all with my android they would have just told me to take a big pill also i wasn't allowed at school during this time my school didn't want me there because i was a risk so i had to be going through the day program because i was such a risk that i couldn't go to my regular school like everyone else everyone else was shipped off to their regular schools me however i had to go to the day program because i wasn't allowed <sighs> um so I then got out, went home, it was fine, I had other appointments and I liked my way through them. Eventually I got put into a different health system, they took me off their system and put me in a different system. I lied, I got only like like five weeks funded and all the rest you had paid for and that my person was leaving anyway so it didn't work, I got like four weeks. And then that left, um, I went off my antidepressants like three weeks after I started with this woman. I was getting sick and it just wasn't working. I was getting depressed in on them. So I just went off them and she was like, oh, I have to talk to your person. You're not allowed. So I'm like, I went off them and I'm feeling a lot better. So I went off my tablets. No one cared. I, well, yeah, I got off my tablets right after I had miscarried too because I was on them while I miscarried which sucked and when I miscarried I just went off them I didn't care um and yeah that's basically my experience in the system I was able to lie my way out of it I do not suggest lying your way out of it but at that time I really 
wanted out. I wanted to be at home with my mum. I just wanted, I hated it there. Your phone got taken off you at like 10 o'clock at night and you didn't get it back until three o'clock on a school, on a week, on a weekday. Um, so yeah, on a weekday, you didn't, you got taken off you at 10 o'clock at night and you got it at 3 p.m. So when everyone got back from school, which sucked. Um, and this, that was the only time I could talk to my mum because they wouldn't let me, like, call her or anything. Um, and, uh, on weekends you got it at midday and taken off at 10 o'clock at night. So I got, like, longer to talk to my mum on weekends. Um, my mum was allowed to come see me sometimes, so that was fine. The time she did, I would lock my, uh, my, ourselves in my room and we would talk for ages. Um, but I just wanted out and I'm going to cry because I wanted out so bad because I'm mummy's girl, okay? I don't, I'm not ashamed of that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to end this video because I'm going to cry. <laughs> um... Don't lie your way out of the system. If you are depressed, do get help, please. I've lost so many people to suicide. I don't want to lose anyone else. And if you're a viewer, I count you as my family and friends. Um, and I don't want to see any of you guys die from that. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.